As the mainstream media stokes fear and division, and the government tells us what we must do, who we can see, and even where we can go, behind the scenes, a sinister plan is now being rolled out across America. Buried on page 314 of a document from the desk of Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, a scheme to enact enormous change to the appearance and value of our money, and possibly a complete and total overhaul of our retail banking system, a change that could impact the savings of millions of Americans, especially those with more than $2,500 in the bank. But then, hours after it surfaced in the halls of Congress, the plan was quickly redacted, scrubbed from existence. What was it they did not want us to see? Today, Jeff Brown, founder and lead investigator for Brownstone Research, part of the international research firm that accurately predicted the fall of the Soviet Union, the dot-com collapse, and President Trump's surprise victory, reveals the full story. Brown will show us why Nancy Pelosi's dangerous new plan is now passing through the Senate, a scheme backed by a handful of global elites, including the United Nations, the Gates Foundation, the Federal Reserve, and the International Monetary Fund, a plan so radical it seems hard to believe. Already, big financial firms like J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo have started to implement it, and as you'll see, they actually have no choice in the matter. Major retailers like Starbucks, McDonald's, and Whole Foods, owned by Amazon's Jeff Bezos, are taking steps to prepare. And Microsoft and Visa have unveiled plans that will actually help it all take effect within months. In today's interview, Jeff Brown is going to share exactly how you can escape the consequences of this new money plan and even potentially grow your savings by 10 times or more. Most people think inflation is today's biggest financial risk, but sadly, that doesn't even begin to explain what's about to happen. If you've got any money in a U.S. bank account or a retirement plan, or if you simply collect a fixed income from the federal government, please pay close attention because you are at risk. The entire financial system is on the verge of a shock unlike anything we have seen in decades. Those who take the critical steps today to protect their wealth will survive and potentially even thrive. Those who don't could be decimated. Hi, everyone. My name is Chris Hurt. On today's show, our guest is a man whose firm has foretold some of the biggest turning points in history, from the fall of the Soviet Union to the dot-com collapse and the shocking election of President Trump in 2016. And today, we're fortunate he is here to explain a huge shift that he sees coming. Jeff Brown, thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure, Chris, as always. Let me get right to this. I, you are here today, I understand, to basically warn all of us about a huge shock that we're about to see and experience in our financial system. Tell me about that. Well, Chris, that's right. But what I have to share isn't a prediction about some far off future event. It's actually playing out right now. Right. Which it means it is very serious. It's serious and it's sinister, Chris. Yeah. Please go on. Well, Chris, I'm about to blow the lid off of a new and astounding plan being unleashed on you, on me, and on everyone across our nation by the United States government with the full backing of some of the most powerful corporations in America. Right. So companies we've heard of. Oh, I guarantee you've heard of every single one of them. In fact, you probably drove by several of them on your way here today. I see. So this, this plan is being hatched basically in broad daylight by companies that everyday Americans are customers of, right? Exactly. And it's being pitched as a good thing by folks like Bill Gates and his friends at the World Economic Forum. But when this plan goes into effect, I expect something very strange to happen. And I'm, not, I'm really not saying this to scare you. But if my research proves correct, your hard-earned savings could absolutely be at risk. Privacy could be a thing of the past. The way that we borrow, spend, save, and invest could be turned inside out. Okay, there's a lot there, but let me go back to one thing you said specifically. Sure. You said savings will be, I think you said, at risk. Are you trying to say that stocks are going to crash? No, Chris. This has nothing to do with a stock market crash, and I'm I'm not talking about inflation or anything like that. The government and folks in the media will call it a tool for our own good. But as hmm. you'll see, it will only lead to more chaos and division. Yeah, obviously not good for the average American. Well, that's 
That's an understatement. No, our lives are about to be altered in ways that would have been unthinkable just a few years ago. Right. I just realized I said the average American a moment ago, but that actually this is going to affect everybody, all, all Americans. Any American with more than a few hundred dollars in the bank, in a retirement plan, even folks who simply collect a fixed income from the federal government. Chris, I've rarely been this alarmed by a coming event, but this is by far the most important warning I've ever issued. So I urge your viewers to please pay very close attention to what I'm about to share. Well, I have to pause and say this. If I didn't know you better or your firm's record, Jeff, I'd probably be telling my producer right now, let's wrap this interview up and move on to the next guest. And I, and I don't mean to offend you by any of that, but what I'm trying to say is on the surface, mm. this sounds a little out there. It's a little extreme, right? Well, I understand. And maybe it feels even a little bit crazy, right? And if that's what you think or anybody else, I really don't blame you because that's the same thing people said when we predicted the dot-com collapse. Mm. The same thing when we predicted the fall of the Soviet Union and the meteoric rise of Bitcoin. So I get it. When I tell you what's happening, you might be tempted to shrug it off. But I assure you, that would be a big mistake. Right. Well, you've certainly got our attention right now. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, good. Because I'm about to show you why if a small group of powerful elites get their way, money as we know it could literally disappear in the next few months. That soon. I'm not exaggerating. The transition, it's actually already underway. Let me show you what I mean with a little story. Okay. It all started innocently enough. It was seven minutes after 9 a.m. on a Monday morning while most people were eating breakfast or watching yet another hysterical pandemic update on the morning news. A dangerous plan was hatched in our nation's capital. It was published by Forbes. And then as quickly as it appeared, it vanished. It vanished? Just like that? Do you exactly, know why? Exactly. Well, a better question might be, what was it they didn't want us to see? Yeah. Stand by for just one moment, Jeff. If you're just joining us, you came in late, hold on to your seats. My guest here is Jeff Brown. And he does say that something strange is about to happen in America, unlike anything we've ever seen before. So, Jeff, let me ask you this. What was it then that they didn't want us to see? And my next question is, how on earth did you find out about it? <laughs> well, as a member of the Chamber of Digital Commerce, I have certain connections in Washington, D.C. that hmm. most folks don't have. And so through my network, I was able to get my hands on an unredacted copy of the plan with the original language intact. And I'll share that with you and the viewers in just a moment. Mm -hmm. When you see what it says, I think you'll be furious. Really? Well, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> well, for most people, it's not good at all. But when you see what I saw, your jaw will drop. Mine sure did. So if you dismiss this as nuts, I certainly, I won't blame you. No one wants to believe anything yeah. like this could happen. Certainly not here in America. But as you'll see, no other outcome is possible. And that's why I agreed to join you tonight. I want to share what I've discovered far and wide. That way, at the very least, you won't be caught off guard when events take a turn for the worse. And that's a good thing. You, and you've got all of our uh, attention of everyone here. Can you take us back to the, this plan now that you're talking about? Can you tell us who they are? I mean, I mean, the people behind it. Sure. I've spent the past year connecting the dots and at the core of this plan is a multi-trillion dollar scheme endorsed by the likes of the Clinton Foundation, the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund, the Federal Reserve, and even Bill Gates. All right, so Clinton, Gates, the Federal Reserve, this sounds like it definitely goes all the way to the top. That's right, and nobody will be immune from the widespread effects. And it's all set to become an instant reality with the help from Microsoft, thanks to this new troubling patent, which I'll tell you about in just a moment. All right. So I have to say, forgive me, but this sounds like one hell of a conspiracy theory that you're spinning here, Jeff. And you'd be right, Chris, but it is not. How so? Because it is all happening out in the open. And I have the evidence right here. Don't worry. I don't expect you to take my word for it. I'm going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt right now it is no conspiracy theory. As I said, the facts are all out in the open, and I won't be asking you or anybody else to take any leaps of faith today. All right, he's going to make it easy for us. All right, so we got Microsoft yep. uh, is behind this, the IMF, the Fed, anybody else? 
Well, the list includes dozens of U.S. corporations, banks, and power brokers, and they're all scrambling to prepare for what's coming next. Some like McDonald's, Disney, Shake Shack, Starbucks, Panera, Walmart, and Whole Foods have already beta tested the first steps. So they're, they're preparing right now already. Chris, this has been in the works since 2020 and probably even longer. In fact, some folks say it might even be the reason why the government and the media have stoked fear and squashed dissent. Oh. Chris, do you remember seeing signs like these? I definitely remember seeing those. Businesses everywhere across the country stopped accepting cash, right? That's right. But you know what? I haven't seen many of those recently. I mean, I thought places like Starbucks and Walmart, they only banned cash for a short time, and they were doing it for health reasons, <laughs> right? Well, that, that was a story that the media told. They said it was to protect people. Yes. But I found overwhelming evidence that proves the media story was just a cover. Another media lie. Imagine that. I'm not surprised. Why would, what were they trying to hide? Well, according to my research, this was a dry run. A beta test, if you will. A beta test. To, you mean to see how the public would react? I think that was one of the goals. Was there another reason? Yes. It was a small bite to see if Americans would willingly except such a dramatic change to the financial system. Mm. And it was a way for businesses to put the infrastructure in place for this inevitable shift without raising suspicion. Yeah, so ordinary Americans never suspected a thing. Most just went along with the plan and didn't even raise an eyebrow, Chris. All right, so my next question is, mm. <laughs> is it too late to push back? As far as I can tell, this plan is a done deal. The dollar as we know it, is being permanently dismantled in broad daylight right under our noses. And as I'll show you, major corporations like Microsoft, Visa, and others are feverishly building out the infrastructure that will overhaul our entire financial system. Why haven't we heard about this before today? I mean, why is it that Jeff Brown is the only one talking about it? Oh, I'm not the only one who's caught on to this sinister plan. Bill Gates sees it too. After all, it appears he's orchestrating the big push for a monetary overhaul. He says, and I quote, when historians write the book on the COVID-19 pandemic, what we've lived through so far will probably take up only the first third or so. The bulk of the story will be what happens next. Wow. So I, what happens next, I'm assuming, is a huge change to our money. Exactly. This historic shift will change everything about our money. Folks who take the time to prepare could emerge on the other side wealthier than they've ever imagined possible. But if we don't take action, our savings could be decimated. All right. So you realize that you just hit us with a nuclear bomb here that you've dropped on us with all of this, Jeff. So let, let me unpack this just a bit for all of us. The first thing I'm wondering is, have we ever seen anything like this before, anything comparable? Well, I'm glad you asked, and that's exactly where I was going to go next. The answer is yes. Big financial power grabs like this have happened here in America three times before, each time with the same result. Three times? Yes. Back in 1907, for example, in reaction to a major financial panic, powerful bankers like J.P. Morgan himself and others united to, quote, unquote, save the financial system. But in reality, the panic gave the elites cover, which they took advantage of to pass dangerous new legislation, an overhaul of the financial system. Today, the law that they passed is considered one of the most infamous power grabs in history. All right, now how can you say that? Why is that? Well, since it was passed, ordinary folks lost 96% of the value of their hard-earned money. Hmm. Now, of course, I'm talking about the Federal Reserve Act. It was such a disaster for the American people that on his deathbed in 1919, President Woodrow Wilson expressed deep remorse for his role in the creation of the Federal Reserve. I did not know that. How unusual. It's not mm. every day that you hear about a politician <laughs> expressing regret about their own decisions. Right? That's for sure. It almost never happens. <laughs> Now, you've got to give credit to President Wilson for being honest, at least after the fact. But the mastermind behind America's second financial shock sure didn't express regret. Right. So uh, was that another politician? Another president. Mm. Let's skip ahead to 1933. 
smack in the middle of the Great Depression. The stock market plummeted 89%, 89%, Chris. Unemployment soared and construction and manufacturing ground to a halt. That's when President Roosevelt and his cronies rode to the rescue and again used the crisis to their advantage. The legislation Roosevelt signed into law was called the Emergency Banking Act. And at the time, in 1933, our currency was backed by gold. And coins like these were popular. But with a single stroke of his pen, FDR forced Americans to turn in their gold savings. In fact, get this, Chris, the government gave savers $20.67 in cash for every one ounce coin that they turned in. But once they had all the gold, a great deception took place. With the flick of his pen, Roosevelt revalued the price of gold from $20.67 to $35 an ounce, effectively stealing 41 cents on the dollar. Wow. Mm. Now, why did people, why did the American public go along with this? Because if I put myself in their shoes, I'm not sure I would have, I'd like to think, I wouldn't have given up the gold. Well, that's a great observation, Chris. But remember, when the government wants folks to do something badly enough, <laughs> they carry a pretty big stick. Yeah. And in this case, failure to comply with FDR's gold theft was punishable with a massive $10,000 fine or jail time. Yeah. So I think I'm seeing, with your help here, I'm, I'm beginning to discover a pattern. Every time there's a crisis that rears its ugly head, the elites mm. make sweeping changes to the money and the economy and the fortunes of hardworking Americans end up being threatened. Is that what we're getting at? You're right, Chris. It's the exact same pattern that we've seen play out over and over throughout history. Now, if you wait too long in any of these scenarios, or if you simply follow orders, your savings will suffer. You must look deeper if you truly want to see the shape of what's to come and take early action. If you do, you can not only avoid the worst of these money grabs, you can emerge wealthier than you ever imagined. All right, well, given the choice, I'm gonna choose the latter. I like the sound of that one better. Now, you mentioned this has happened a few times before, and you've mentioned two now. Is there another example? Well, yes, the last time a huge crisis led to big changes to the dollar was just over 40 years ago. On a Sunday evening in 1971, America was in the midst of the Vietnam War, and President right. Nixon interrupted the weekly episode of Bonanza it's a favorite of yours, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to address the nation with a shocking announcement. He decoupled the dollar from gold. Uh, what do you mean by that, decoupled? Well, you see, the paper dollars that we use today were once backed by actual gold bullion. Right. Held on deposit at the U.S. Treasury. Today, the dollar is backed by nothing. I should have remembered that. It's, it's easy for me to forget. But in reality, that was actually one of the biggest turning points in our nation's history. What happened next? Well, at the time, the government was spending lots of money on social programs like the Great Society, mm. and our military budget was through the roof thanks to the Vietnam War. Now today, if government wants to spend more, they just throttle up the printing press. But back then it was different. Every single dollar was backed by gold. So if Nixon wanted to spend more money... He needed to find more gold. Good, yes. So tell me, What's easier to do, dig up more gold or just cut the link between gold and money? Yeah, well, it, Nixon obviously made the choice. He took the easy way out, goodbye gold. And that's precisely what happened. Nixon's fear was that the cost of the war, along with his massive welfare program known as the Great Society, would bankrupt America. So he came up with a plan to, in his words, stabilize the dollar. Stabilize the dollar, which actually it sounds like a good thing. Well, yes, on the surface, it sure did. But then the exact opposite thing happened. When the dollar was tied to gold, the average American had to work about 800 hours to afford a new Ford pickup. Right. But today? Well, today, the time it takes has more than doubled, Chris. Oh. And the number of hours it takes to afford the average house has soared as well. In San Diego, for example, homeowners work 77 hours every month to put a roof over their heads. And in Miami, it's even more expensive. It takes a whopping 109 hours. And it seems to soar higher and higher every day. Exactly. Meanwhile, Americans have never worked 
more hours than they do today to service their debt. Can you see why Nixon's decision was such a disaster? Yeah, the price of everything is spiraling out of control. Right. Not only did it cause our dollar to plummet, but cutting the dollar loose from gold also had another important effect. It made the U.S. dollar a fiat currency. Fiat, which means it's backed by essentially nothing. Not a damn thing, Chris. Yeah. This move essentially unleashed the Federal Reserve to throttle up the printing press and accelerate the expansion of the money supply. Which is a huge problem today. And most Americans have no idea that this is happening. They feel the, they feel the pinch. Mm -hmm. And they're not sure why it's happening or you know, what the heck to do about it. But if you don't have to be a historian or a mathematician to understand what's going on, it is simply supply and demand. The more of something that exists in this world, the less that it's worth. Just take a look at this chart. Right. Trillions, trillions in debt since 1971. Trillions in new debt, Chris. Trillions upon trillions. Right. So it's no wonder our spending power has fallen so much. Chris, it's fallen 96% over the last 100 years or so. And most folks know things are getting more and more expensive. But we've adjusted remarkably well. Really? How so? Well, in the 1970s, many households decided to become dual income households in order to make more money. In the 80s and 90s, we leveraged up with debt, borrowing our way from paycheck to paycheck. And now we've gotten to the point where the average American needs to take out a seven-year loan just to buy a car. Right. Now, that's all happened just since Nixon decoupled us from gold, the dollar. Yes. And the changes we've seen so far they are nothing compared to what's coming next. Over the years, every last bit of value has been stripped from our money. First it was gold, then it was paper, and now our money could disappear altogether. Disappear altogether. 100% to be replaced by a new type of dollar that will permanently change the function of our money from a simple medium of exchange and store of value to a much more Orwellian new technology few will understand at first. I've even seen it called a digital Nixon shock. Uh, I do not like the sound of this, Jeff. Well, on the surface, this is another plan being spun as a way to protect Americans and the economy. But it will be nothing more than another elite-driven coup in disguise, driven by the likes of big tech, Bill Gates and a handful of lawmakers in Washington, D.C. All right. Well, I think I understand what you're getting at here. But in each example you've just given us, the Federal Reserve Act, the gold uh, confiscation, the Nixon shock, it seems like every time it just ended up meaning more power and control for the government. I mean, less wealth for Americans right. like every one of us on Main Street. But when you put it that way, how can I say, how, how do I put this? It's a, it's a little intimidating, uh, daunting, and I think I can understand why most people, myself included, in, when we're in situations like this, we just find a way to endure it. You know, we don't really do anything about it because we we just overcome by fear and doubt and we lose hope. We just get resigned to it all. It is completely natural to feel that way, Chris. But I'm here to tell you, it's not impossible. We actually do have a choice. And my hope is that once you see what's coming, you'll be able to sidestep the financial storm, protect your hard-earned resources, and maybe even stick it in their face with a few strategic investments that I'll show you with the potential to hand you 1,000% or more. All right. We like the sound of that. We're shifting into the good news here. But before we go on, there's another thing I've been wondering. I got to know, how did you hear about this? I mean, is this something that you have been following for a long time? Did you see this coming a long time ago? Or has this just popped up on, on Jeff Brown's radar recently? Well, I've been watching this plan unfold slowly over the past few years. And first, as an angel investor in Ripple Labs, a firm working on solutions to move money quickly and cheaply anywhere around the globe. Yeah. And then as a member of DC-based Chamber of Digital Commerce, where I fully saw the life-changing ramifications of this massive overhaul. But I really started to connect the dots and realize the urgency of this scheme when I came across a single section in a bill submitted to Congress in the early days of the pandemic. So let's have a little fun. I brought something I want to show you. This will help us connect the dots together. All right. Are, are we talking about a, a copy of the bill? 
It the is, one that vanished. It is. I brought a copy of the bill just as it is written. This is an early draft of the Take Responsibility for Workers and Families Act, a bill submitted by California Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi in response to the pandemic. But a few days after it was introduced, it was quickly redacted, scrubbed from existence. Right. May, may I? Was there, was there something in that that the public wasn't supposed to see? Well, I'm going to show you. Right here on page 314 of the 1,000-plus page draft in section 101, direct stimulus payments for families. Let's zoom in so viewers at home can see what we're looking at here. Chris, do you see the sections that I've circled here? Line 13. Right, so I'm looking at this, it says digital dollar. Right here in plain black and white, Pelosi's plan calls for the creation of a new digital dollar along with a digital dollar wallet. So this is right out of the same, the same game plan, a playbook used by FDR and, and JP Morgan, Nixon and so forth, right? Yep, once again, the elites are planning a huge change to the foundation of our financial system under the cover of a global crisis. Same story, but this time the consequences will be tenfold. Tenfold. Worse. I don't know. The, the other changes already seem pretty disastrous to me. You think this is going to be even bigger? Well, I'll show you why in a minute. But first, I want to show everyone the elite's playbook in action. So let's go back to Nancy Pelosi's bill. The digital dollar was presented as a useful way for Americans to receive future stimulus payments. Right, which seems reasonable. But in the final bill, there is no digital dollar language. So they, they stripped it out, but obviously that can't be where the story ends, right? No, <laughs> of course not. A brand new Senate bill, almost identical in nature and backed by a senator with close ties to the Clinton family, surfaced the very next day, Chris. Here it is. This new bill is being reviewed by the highest levels of Congress right now. And if my research is correct, it could pass into law in the next few months. So basically, the digital dollar didn't disappear. This was just a, it was a, a redirect. Right. But there's more. Even if the digital dollar rollout doesn't happen in the next six months, even if it takes 12 months or more, it won't matter much because major American businesses are already building the infrastructure to usher in the cashless plan themselves. Right now, Chris, folks who ignore this shift will soon be blindsided. Jeff, if this overhaul really is coming so quickly, so soon, why isn't anybody talking about this? Great question, Chris. The truth is, it's all being done in the background. Few can see the big picture. And while the public is distracted and fighting against each other, the elites are moving quickly on their plan to end cash. All right, we're playing into their hands. But here's the good news. You've done all the legwork here. You can see the big picture. That's why you're here. Well, I can see exactly what's coming because of my connections and my network. One of my biggest advantages is all of my boots on the ground research and, of course, my time in Washington, D.C. and with the Chamber of Digital Commerce. As a group, we are working hard to bring smaller changes that can coexist with the current financial system. But the elites are using a once-in-a-generation crisis to ram through their own ideas and their hell-bent on winning at all costs. They are full steam ahead, Chris, which brings me to our next dot to connect. Yeah, another document? <laughs> yes. Now, Chris, check out this patent. It was filed patent. by a company everyone has heard of, founded by none other than Bill Gates. Chris, I bet you can guess the company. <laughs> if it's Gates, it's got to be Microsoft, right? Right. Now, Microsoft, take a look at the alarming new technology Microsoft just patented. And pay close attention to the patent number, Chris. I was just looking at that 060606. That's a little <laughs> creepy. <laughs> yes. And the technology is even creepier. Uh, do you see what it says close to the top of the patent? Right. Uh, let's, oh let's zoom in for the viewers. Yeah, at home. let me try this. It, if you can take a look at that, it says cryptocurrency system using body activity data. What in the world does that mean? Well, it means Microsoft has invented a system that can sense things like a person's movement, their body temperature, their heart rate, eye activity, blood flow, maybe even our brain waves in order to track our body's activity 
and transmit a digital currency wirelessly. All right, so in a nutshell. In a nutshell, this creepy technology could allow the elites to roll out the digital dollar immediately. And get this, this patent came out just three days. Three days, Chris, after Pelosi's digital dollar bill came Are to light. Are you kidding me? That, that's a coincidence? I agree, it's very suspicious. But when you see what I'm about to show you next, I think it'll be apparent that none of this was a coincidence. I have another patent to show you right here. It was revealed just weeks after the Microsoft patent. Yeah, was this another, another patent from Microsoft? No, Chris, not Microsoft. No, this one was filed by Visa. Now, take a look at the section that I've circled. This is crazy. I'm gonna hold this up and we'll try to zoom in on this too. Do you, Do you see what it says? Yeah, it says digital, right up here, digital fiat currency. And further down, I've highlighted uh, another section. It's the most alarming section, actually. In quotes, causes the removal of the physical cash from circulation in a fiat currency system, end quote. And if that weren't enough to raise your suspicion, it gets even worse. Worse than removing the cash? Take a look at this from section seven of the patent. The removal of physical currency from circulation includes physically destroying the physical currency. They're planning to destroy physically dollars. Exactly. All right, I, look, Jeff, I'm seeing a lot of moving parts here, obviously, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure I understand how Visa and Microsoft and Bill Gates, how are they linked to Nancy Pelosi's new money plan exactly? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. You see, Chris, years ago, Bill Gates pledged to give away his billions of dollars to charitable causes, including vaccine research, family planning, and aid for poor countries. And I definitely remember hearing about that. Well, yes. it was all over the news at the time, if you remember, but I'll bet you haven't heard of one of Gates' lesser known initiatives. It's called the Better Than Cash Alliance. Interesting, <laughs> better than cash. All right, the goal of the Better Than Cash Alliance from their own website is to accelerate the global transition from cash to digital payments. Fascinating and alarming, but I'm, I'm still not sure I'm making the connection here. Well, it'll be more obvious when I show you who else is involved with Gates's Better Than Cash Alliance. It includes some of America's biggest companies. Okay, so again, firms that we've all heard of. Oh yes, Citi is involved, Ford, Coca-Cola, MasterCard, and of course, Visa. And they're working with powerful organizations like the Clinton Development Initiative, the United Nations, USAID, the Global Fund, UNICEF, and the United Nations Population Fund. Incredible. It's like a who's who of power brokers and elite foundations. Exactly. In all, the Better Than Cash Alliance includes 80 world governments, some of the biggest companies and major international organizations. Right. So we're talking about a very far-reaching scheme going on. Are, are you starting to see why I'm convinced the events to come will be the biggest change to our money in history? Yeah, I don't like what I'm seeing, but thanks to Jeff Brown, I'm definitely seeing it. This is coming into focus for me, yeah. Well, there's one more dot I'd like to show you that will tie it all together. So have you heard of ID2020? ID2020 is a global partnership involving Gavi, a vaccine-focused alliance founded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation along with Microsoft and the Rockefeller Foundation. More connections with Gates, Microsoft, and the wealthy elites. Exactly. And yet another organization with sinister objectives under the cover of charity. From the ID2020 website, their goal is to set the global standards for a personal digital ID that could tie together, get this, e-passports, driver's license, debt and credit cards, transit passes, and even health records, all in a single digital ID. In other words, a digital ID that could tie our entire lives together, including a digital dollar. Jeff, what you're essentially telling us today is that this is a whole lot bigger than just getting rid of cash. Oh, much bigger. Bill Gates is using his vast wealth, power, and government connections to oppose cash and usher in a digital US dollar, which I expect will be combined with a digital ID, our 
health records, contact information, and so much more. Well, again, I mean this as a compliment. If, if there were anyone else here with me right now telling me this, if, if you weren't such a renowned technology expert, I might say, I might say this is a nutty conspiracy theory, <laughs> but I can't do that because I know Jeff Brown. Well, and I'd agree if I didn't have the proof in my hands. Yeah. We've looked at, we've seen it. The entire financial system is on the verge of a shock unlike anything that we've seen in decades. With each passing week, the dominoes are falling faster and faster. Let me see if I can sort of summarize and, and connect the dots to use your phrase one more time here mm. for myself and everybody out there listening. So we got, we got dot number one here, Pelosi's digital cash cover-up, if you want to call it that, a new digital cash bill. It's rippling through Congress as we speak. We got dot number two, which is the creepy patents from Microsoft and Visa, along with the Bill Gates Better Than Cash Alliance. And those are showing us that the, the government really has the full support of America's largest businesses, obviously. And then we have dot number three, which is everything is being tied together by ID 2020, which is a scheme to attach everyone's money and identity to electronic passports, e-passports. Well, at this point, it's hard not to come to one inescapable conclusion. The cash in our pockets will soon be replaced by an all digital currency, a digital dollar. And it doesn't matter that the financial legislation has not been signed yet. As you've seen, U.S. companies are already scrambling to prepare for the transition. McDonald's, for example, is experimenting with cashless kiosks. Starbucks has tested accepting only electronic payments at many of its locations. Mm -hmm. And this sign appeared at Whole Foods, owned by Gates' friend and fellow billionaire Jeff Bezos. Wow. And the media really sold all of that as temporary pandemic precautions. I bought it. Oh, they sure did. But as I've already shown, the evidence is overwhelming. Now, I've been involved with technology firms for more than three decades, and I am fully convinced these precautions were actually a beta test for the new Orwellian digital dollar system. Yeah, a beta test. In other words, these are real-world experiments that firms conduct before they finalize a new technology. We all exactly, know what that is. Exactly, exactly. Now, look, even longtime Federal Reserve Governor Lael Brainerd is pushing for a digital dollar. And if that wasn't enough, Chris, if you don't believe me yet, I have another smoking gun law to show you. <laughs> it was introduced by Congressman Don Bayer, H.R. 4741. Now, most folks brush it off as simply a law to regulate the Wild West of cryptocurrencies. The key sections went virtually unnoticed, but I dug deeper. Right, and found? Well, Chris, take a look at this. According to this new bill, Section 11 of the Federal Reserve Act is set to be amended, handing the Federal Reserve power to issue digital versions of Federal Reserve notes. And there we have it, the this, digital dollar. Chris, this is the smoking gun, Chris, the linchpin. The power elites, the biggest businesses, and the most powerful firms in America are all pushing for a digital dollar. And now, with this bill, the Federal Reserve has granted the authority to make that happen. And that's why Microsoft, McDonald's, Walmart, and Visa are quickly and already implementing these changes. Jeff, is there any way to stop this? I don't think anything can stop it now. It's already in motion. That's why you absolutely must prepare today. I mean, right, right now, as you saw each time we've seen a big change to our money, unwary savers have been left holding the bag. Yeah. And there is more. Loss of purchasing power isn't the only threat that we're facing with these changes. Oh my God, what else is there? <laughs> well, the new law I just showed you authorizes the Federal Reserve to record and track all transactions involving oh. digital Federal Reserve notes. In other words, a new digital dollar combined with the removal of physical cash would mean the end of our financial privacy or worse, it could mean the end of freedom and liberty in America. Now, former Congressman Dr. Ron Paul explained it like this. Think about it. Imagine if all your new digital money is stored in an account managed and tracked by decision makers at the Federal Reserve. They'll know everywhere we spend our money and everything we buy. And it will also hand them total control 
over every part of our lives, Chris. Surveillance and control. I, I have to say it. I, I don't want any part of that. Orwell's 1984 was supposed to be a work of fiction, Chris. <laughs> it is truly a disaster. The digital dollar will hand elites total control. I, I like to think that I'm a student of history to a certain extent. It's easy, uh, in my mind, it's easy to see how this is going to be used against us. Well, we're limited only by our imagination. Yeah. They could prevent you from buying sugary snacks or cans of soda by their standards. You're a few pounds overweight. They could suspend your driver's license if you owe taxes or ban you from buying guns and ammunition. They could even prevent you from buying gas or a plane ticket if you refuse their latest health mandate. If they deem you a threat, for any one of these reasons, or a new reason they make up at any time in the future, yeah. what is to stop them from locking you out of your bank and retirement accounts entirely? We are already seeing this play out in places like China. They call it a social credit score. I've heard about that as well. It, it, this whole thing makes George Orwell's 1984 seem like a children's fairy tale. It's yet a, another historic disaster by central planners, but like any technological change. It won't be bad for everyone. The Fed could choose to add money to your account like Nancy Pelosi wanted to do with the distribution of pandemic stimulus checks. Right, but Jeff, if they can add money... <laughs> you beat me to it, Chris. If they can add money, the Fed can also reach in and take money straight out of your account. Exactly. They could force you to share your retirement savings in the name of fairness and equality. If and when corrupt politicians enact a socialist-style wealth tax, as progressives like Bernie Sanders and AOC have been talking about it, trillions upon trillions of dollars have been added to the Fed's balance sheet, that bill will have to come due at some point. Mm -hmm. I believe folks who are successful and either earn a lot of money or keep a lot of money in their accounts will become the Fed's number one target. Just occurred to me, this could play out like it did in uh, uh, Cyprus back in uh, 2013, I think, when the EU forced a bank there to capture yes. almost half of their depositors' money. Exactly the same way. When the next major financial meltdown happens, the Fed will almost certainly deploy negative interest rates to stimulate spending, which could cost you negative 5% interest or more on your deposit. So. Get this, imagine opening up your bank statement and watching your savings shrink every month or collecting your paycheck or social security and being told, spend it now or it will disappear next week. Use it or lose it. Now, how could they do that? Well, yes, the technology is already being tested overseas. I'm, try I'm, I'm trying to process. I want to be fair and open-minded. I got to process everything that you've just said. And it's... <laughs> It's tough to keep a smile on my face. I don't want to, to go into the depths of depression here, but it is very clear, I think, to me and probably everyone watching, you are talking about a disaster of epic proportions. No, and that's the problem. Most people, when they think about the next crisis, they can't help but think back to the last one. Yeah, you, right. the stock market crash, real estate collapse. Right, but the next crisis will be quite different. In fact, most people won't see it coming. We're on the a verge of a disaster on par with the creation of the Federal Reserve, uh, Roosevelt's gold confiscation, mm -hmm. and Nixon's shocking decision to decouple the dollar from the gold standard. So for folks with more than $2,500 in the bank, this transformation of the American financial system could decimate their hard-earned savings. Look, America has seen three major shocks to its financial system since 1907, but this time, the value of our money could be obliterated and the function of our money will be fundamentally overhauled. All right, question. Can mm. I protect my savings now by simply owning gold, silver, precious, uh, precious metals? Or are there other tangible assets that, that can get us through the worst of what's about to happen? Well, that might have worked in the past. But with a new digital dollar, that simply won't be enough. You'll still be exposed. Right. So what do you recommend? <laughs> now, there's the question. For thousands of years, gold and silver have been considered the world's best safe haven assets. Right. And for most of America's history, taking cash out of the bank has been the best way to take direct control over your money. Right. But if I'm understanding you right, that's not even going to be po that won't be an option. That's so. right. If you hope to emerge 
from the upheaval with your nest egg intact, you'll need to consider buying an asset you can use to become your own banker held privately outside the grasp of the legacy banking system. And many consider it a harder asset than gold and silver and without the headaches and challenges of storage and transport. Well, all right, I like the sound of this. Are we talking about some sort of commodity here? Uh, this wouldn't be stocks, bonds, or an option play. Or no, something. Chris, it's not any of those things. It doesn't involve silver, gold, or land, but it's simple to buy with a few clicks on your computer. Right, easy to store? Oh yes, it's as easy to keep stocks. So if you're comfortable using a standard brokerage account, it's nearly as simple as buying and selling on the NASDAQ. Mm -hmm. But I should caution, it's not for the faint of heart, as this corner of the market is volatile. All right, so not the kind of investment an advisor is gonna tell us about, because they don't, they don't want to tell you anything outside the mainstream. That's too risky for them, right? Chris, you get it. Yes, it's okay. definitely outside of the mainstream. And in my opinion, the volatility is a feature, not a problem. In fact, the nature of this asset is why I consider it a near-perfect investment for any American who believes in the power of gold to preserve wealth and the privacy and freedom of using cash. And here's the best part. It's not controlled by any central bank or country, which means it is almost completely decentralized from the hands of bureaucratic manipulation. Hallelujah. So it's this is something that preserves wealth, privacy, liberty, and freedom. The only thing left is big gains. Is there a potential for profit here? Or is this, or is this just a simple store of value like gold? Well, in some ways it is similar to gold, but it's even better. And I'd be surprised if it didn't outpace gold and silver by a mile as the digital dollar is rolled out. In fact, hmm. we're already seeing this happen. It soared more than nine times higher since the start of the pandemic. And I expect it to soar a thousand percent higher over time. That is why with each passing week, more and more people are putting a percentage of their savings into it. All right, I can't wait. I got to know how this works. <laughs> Tell us. Well, I've just put together a brand new report to explain everything you need to know. It's called The Escape Plan, How to Become Your Own Banker with the World's Hardest Asset. And in it, I'll explain how to buy the world's hardest asset to escape the grasp of the legacy banking system, mm -hmm. store the asset in a safe location away from the prying eyes of bureaucrats in Washington, D.C., transport as much as you want everywhere you go, safely and securely, but this hard asset is only one way to prepare for this massive change to the financial system. All right, we are all ears. So what else do you recommend that we do specifically? Well, do you recall the industry group I told you about a minute ago? Uh, oh, you mean the, uh, the Chamber of Digital Commerce? Good memory. Right. Yes, it's a DC-based group that includes sitting US congressmen and other high-level officials who are working hard to drive this new digital money in the right direction. Sorry, you've worked with members of Congress. Well, I've met directly with prominent lawmakers and even contributed to the direction of our nation's policies. And right now, my connections have led me to one specific opportunity I believe will offer even more opportunity than the hard asset I shared a minute ago. And as we know, COVID-19 has irreversibly changed the world. Yes, and it seems, it seems like there's something new that's popping up every day. Zoom video conference meetings have replace the boardroom and we got curbside contactless pickup. Workers are fleeing crowded cities for more space in the suburbs and small towns, even out in the country, right? Yes, uh, changes of this magnitude usually take, they take years, sometimes right. even decades to occur. Mm -hmm. And now they're taking place in weeks or months. But what we've seen so far is just the beginning. And in the weeks ahead, global central banks are set to issue central bank digital currencies directly to their citizens. And that means massive changes ahead in the $23 trillion world of big finance. $23 trillion, that's a lot of money. Well, it's a lot of money that's about to be disrupted. You see, many of the old guard firms you've heard of where you probably even keep your money, like Bank of America or Chase, yeah. Citi, Wells Fargo, Chris, they are about to be reset. Now, are, are the banks going to be replaced along with the cash? Well, not exactly. The big banks are, in a large part, being overhauled by another new type of technology called fintech, which fintech. is short for financial technology. Right. So are banks going to disappear? Well, it's certainly possible. But what is more likely 
is that the function of banking is about to change. Okay. The signs on your bank branch will look the same, but if the current administration gets its way, the Federal Reserve will soon own all the banks oh. and your local branch will simply be a licensee of the Fed. Essentially, the banking infrastructure is being rebuilt from the ground up and very few Americans will see it coming. All right, can you lay out for us what exactly that means for me, for us? Well, the way I see it, we're on the verge of a once in a generation opportunity to profit by investing in companies building out the architecture for this massive shift. Right, you called it FinTech, right? right. Can you give us an example of a, a FinTech firm specifically that's on the cutting edge of this move? Well, of course, one example is a company called Square whose stock I originally recommended in 2016. Square, that's right. It's done pretty good, too. <laughs> I'd say so. Since I recommended it, Square, which recently changed its name to Block, has jumped as much as 20 times higher. Look at that. It blasted higher from 30 bucks to, what is that, 240, 250? That's enough to turn $1,000 into more than eight thousand dollars. If I didn't know better, I'd say that was a high flying cryptocurrency. That's well, what it looks like. It has definitely been a good ride. And I think we're just getting started. But Square is just one company I expect will hand investors a small fortune as big finance is disrupted. According to my research, the fintech boom could lead to incredible gains for folks who have a roadmap before the massive shift happens. <laughs> the great thing is Jeff Brown has the roadmap all laid out. All day. I do. Put simply, financial technology, fintech, is revolutionizing the $23 trillion old guard banking industry. You see, over the past three years, while the total value of U.S. bank stocks has slid by 30%, hmm. the total value of fintech stocks has increased by 272%. Chris, this chart says it all. Yeah. Now, why don't we hear about this kind of... This is a huge shift. Why aren't we hearing about this in the news? Because I feel like... This ought to be front page story, if you ask me. I certainly agree, but you have to remember big banks are major sponsors for the mainstream media. Right, so they're in bed together. Of course they are. Yeah. So you won't hear a word about this story until it's obvious to every American, and by then it will be too late. Right, because the profits will be gone. Well, the same way it works with any world-changing investment story. Mm -hmm. That's why if you're going to invest, I'd recommend you do it right now, I, I mean today. I'll be surprised if fintech isn't the biggest bull market of the next five years. And as I've already shown, this situation is happening in the shadows at breakneck pace. Take a look at these headlines. Wall Street's biggest firms are pumping billions of dollars into fintech startups like Ant Group, Stripe, Aiden, and Klarna. Jeff, I have to admit, I have never heard of any of those <laughs> companies or firms. Well, I'm not surprised at all. They're actually all private companies, and so they're nearly impossible for the average investor to get into. I see. But I have found a publicly traded company that anyone can buy in a standard brokerage account today. My favorite way to play the fintech trend is a firm that's perfectly positioned to take advantage of the shift to a digital dollar. Now, as cash is phased out, an entirely new financial architecture will take its place. And everything from ATMs to cards to apps on our phones will need to be revamped. That's basically every single individual piece of the fintech industry, right? Yes, and one firm I found is in prime position to pull it off. And that's because this company already serves, get this, 95 out of the top 100 financial institutions, which will allow them to roll out this new architecture to nearly every financial institution in America. And that is obviously a huge competitive advantage, yeah. a moat in the words of Warren Buffett. That's right. And because this trend is happening so quickly, this company's reach allows it to do what no other firm I'm aware of can possibly do. Which is? Well, install this new financial infrastructure across America almost instantly. Really? Instantly? That sounds like it's. this is good. This is an explosive situation then for us investors out there. Can you tell us more? Sure. This company is already being used to distribute stimulus funds to millions of Americans. And I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes the market's highest flying stock as the shift to a digital dollar plays out. So could that mean it's going to be even bigger than Square? Well, going forward, this company could ultimately soar far higher than Square. 
Now, I put together a report detailing everything you need to know to take a stake. It's called the number one tech play for the digital dollar revolution. How to multiply your nest egg as cash goes digital. Jeff, I'm not even going to make a secret of this. I want to get a copy of that when we're done here. If you don't okay. mind, I'd okay. love that. I'll make sure you get it. Okay. Good. But before we finish up, I'd like to show the viewers how they can get their hands on both of the reports I've mentioned. The Escape Plan, How to Become Your Own Banker with the World's Hardest Asset and the Number One Tech Play for the Digital Dollar Revolution, How to Multiply Your Nest Egg as Cash Goes Digital, along with a special offer and a third report I haven't mentioned yet. Okay, a special offer. Well, yes, this situation is so urgent. I'm offering a steep discount on my research to anyone who sees our briefing today. All right, so how does that work? Well, today's viewers can get a 75% discount on my flagship investment advisory called the Near Future Report. And this is where I share my biggest investment ideas. Uh -huh. like, like your recommendation for Square, right? Because I know that if your followers, if your subscribers, readers, if they'd held on until today, they could have seen some huge gains, like almost as high as 863%, right? That's right, exactly. Now, Chris, how much money would you expect to pay for the opportunity to see 863% gains on a single stock? I would probably, I'm sure it's at least hundreds of dollars for that kind of information, maybe thousands. Well, Chris, many folks have paid even more than that for services that have never even come close to 863% gains. <laughs> but today's viewers won't have to pay anywhere near that price to see my work. Well, that's great. So it's not thousands, but are we talking hundreds of dollars? Well, usually, yes. I think you'll be shocked, though, when I reveal today's special price. But first, I have another report to share with the audience. Okay. Now, as we already discussed, we're entering a new normal. The pandemic was yeah. merely the catalyst, but the effect of these sweeping changes will last for decades. So the dust still hasn't oh, settled. Not even close, Chris. Okay, so as again, as investors, all of us listening now, can we profit from this new normal? How do we do that? Well, the key is to understand, obviously, the world has changed mm -hmm. and we don't have time to go into every piece of the story, but understanding the big picture will be critical to your success going forward. So let's focus on what I think is the biggest, most obvious part of this new normal. Chris, okay. Do you remember the pictures I put up earlier, the, uh, the no cash sign? Sure. There's more to that story? <laughs> oh, yes. Let's take another look at the picture of the McDonald's kiosk, the one that doesn't accept cash. So okay. do you notice anything missing from this picture? Well, the, there's the, the obvious uh, no cash, no cash register. Um, <laughs> you give up? <laughs> I guess I'm missing something. What, what is it? Well, there's no teenager there to take your order. Oh, the kiosk, the minimum wage worker is being replaced. Well done. Exactly. Okay. You've probably seen the same thing at the grocery store. I, I have. I've noticed that. In mm. fact, the last time I went to the, the big box store near my house, I noticed they, they've only got a few of those traditional staffed checkout lanes left now, but you've got a dozen or more of those self-checkout lanes. Yes, I've seen the same thing in my town. But it's not just minimum wagers who have been affected. During the lockdown, most folks... They were forced to shift to online work. Of course, most office workers, it, well, they didn't have a choice. Well, right? and it wasn't too bad, right? Well, yeah, no commute, no unhealthy lunches, no boring meetings. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm guessing for most people, that was probably a, a nice, pretty good change. Right. So we learned that remote work is more viable than ever before. Sure. And I saw a poll recently that said two-thirds of American workers are willing to take a pay cut to keep working from home. Really? Now, that's why you see big companies closing down their headquarters in Silicon Valley, New York, and other cities. And big firms and employees alike are relocating to Texas and Florida. Right. So the remote work trend is probably here to stay. The remote work trend is here to stay. And the automation trend is, too. Make no mistake, this truly is a mega trend that will have lasting effects for the foreseeable future. And mm -hmm. that's why... I put together a report to break it down into simple bite-sized pieces. Yeah, I like that because you you essentially sort of take your readers by the hand, so to speak, and lead them through it all. Now, this is such a massive topic and I can't possibly cover everything here today. Sure. I've come up with five of my favorite picks for the online America megatrend and put them all in a special report called Five Plays to Strike It Rich 
in online America. There's there's another one I'd love to get. Actually, I'll take them all if you don't mind when we're done here. I'll take all of these reports. Now, for the benefit of everybody watching right now, what can viewers do to take action on their own and, and make things happen here? Well, at this critical moment in history, that's the most important thing, taking action. Look, the truth is historic shifts are upon us. Cash could soon be a relic banished to the dustbin of history and our financial system is being dismantled and reimagined behind the scenes. If you take a position in the right investments today, there is a chance you'll walk away rich. But if you get into the wrong ones, your nest egg could suffer. And that's why I wanted to make this as simple as possible for you. So there's nothing standing in your way to position yourself on the right side of history. Today, I put together a special offer for viewers to get access to my research with a special discount. If you sign up right now, my team and I will send you immediately and by email the reports I've shown you here today. The Escape Plan, How to Become Your Own Banker with the World's Hardest Asset, the number one tech play for the digital dollar revolution, five plays to strike it rich in online America, each yours when you try out my flagship investment letter, The Near Future Report. Now, given our track record for finding the biggest tech trends of the last few years, I recommended NVIDIA before it became the top stock of 2016 and AMD in 2018 and 2019. Now, obviously, past performance does not guarantee future success. We could probably charge $500 a year, even $1,000 a year for the near future report. And you know what, Jeff, judging by your feedback that you get from your readers, I have to say that many would probably pay more than that. <laughs> well, you're not wrong, but my goal is to bring these lucrative tech investment opportunities to the average person on the street. Right. That's why the price of a one-year subscription to the Near Future Report is just $199. But, but for today's viewers, the deal we put together is even better. No kidding. Less than $199. Yes. If you go to our main website, you will pay $199 to join. Right. But how can today's audience get the special offer you mentioned? Well, we've set up a special page where viewers can get everything that I've laid out today and the opportunity to try out the Near Future Report for just $49 for an entire year. I urge you to try it out. That's awesome. Now, question, can readers actually see those reports before they buy? No, but here is what I'll do, Chris. If within the first 60 days, they decide it's not a good fit, it's perfectly okay. Mm -hmm. Just let our friendly Florida-based customer service team know and we'll send you a refund for every penny. Jeff, that's, that's a fantastic deal. There's basically no risk here. No risk at all, Chris, exactly. Now, I'd like to leave everyone with a final thought. We're about to witness the greatest financial shift in the history of America. The way that we spend, save, invest, and borrow is being changed forever. My firm has a long track record of making correct calls when it comes to massive cultural and market events. We accurately predicted the fall of the Soviet Union the mortgage crisis of 2008 and 2009, even the dot-com meltdown. And like those massive events, what we're seeing today is so historic that I'm certain we'll still be talking about it for the next 50 years or more. Our entire financial system is about to be turned completely on its head. But if you take the right steps today, you'll not only shield yourself from the worst of the events to come, you'll find out how you can set yourself up to create foundational wealth for many years to come. Please click the button below to get started now. Right, that'll just about do it. Jeff, thank you sincerely for being with us today. This is all very, very powerful. Well, thanks so much, Chris, for having me. And to everyone at home, thank you for watching. We have so much to look forward to. Yeah. And again, folks, for the rest of the story and instant access to Jeff Brown's research, all you've gotta do is click the button below and get started right now. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.